So you might notice we're not at home. We're not in a gym. We're somewhere a little bit different because today we're going to learn to make sandwiches. <laughs> no, no, we're getting tattooed. So today we're not getting anything new done, but what we are doing is refreshing what's already here. Because once you get a tattoo and you go through life and sunshine and holidays, the skin is an adaptable organ. It sheds, you know. Here's what we're at at the moment. I mean, there's no huge loss of detail. I do take very good care of my tattoos. So whenever I do go out in the sun, it's always sunblocked, factor 50. But today, whilst getting tattooed, I thought it'd be fun to sit and chat with a professional tattooist and go through the questions that you guys probably have flowing through your mind from what's the best thing to do when you're getting that tattoo, what's the best way to prep, to think about it, what to eat, what to wear, what to expect, pain, what not to do, avoid. You get the idea. Let's crack on. Why is it so fucking dark? Is this place cursed? Yeah. Is it hexed? Just creating some uh, botch job lighting with the strongest woman. You are the strongest. Woman in England. Do, do, so, do something that makes you look strong. Go. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and what we're going to be doing today is pumping loads of white through the griffin because I tan super easy, which means the whites go cream. Uh, we're going to be putting some more pinks and colours through the flowers just to bring them back to life a little bit. See if you can point it at me. Is it bright there? I got a new job. Yes. Here we go. So we've got a decent before now. Yeah. It's, it's acceptable. It's acceptable. Right. Carry on. Lovely cake. Right. So question number one before we even get started is how do these gizmos work? It runs off a, a power pack which runs through um, the mortar. So you get a movement that goes like this. So which then function. causes a vacuum suction to suck the ink up into the tube, into the tip of the, uh, the, the nib, which then when you touch it into the skin, it punches it into the skin. Which we will show you in a few moments. What we're doing today is we're going to be going and getting tattooed whilst answering questions that you guys want to know, have asked tattooists and, and what they get asked a lot. More importantly than anything, what to avoid if you want to start getting tattooed. <laughs> So I guess one of the first questions we're going to go for is the standard one. Does it hurt to get tattooed? It's not a pain pain. It's not like unbearable pain. The best way I can describe it is... Irritating. Yeah, it's irritating, isn't it? Yeah, so imagine if you get a carpet burn. That hurts, but it's not like, oh, my world's going to end. But then if you just rub the carpet burn, that is the best way of describing it. And that's what it only feels like, like when you, things have been gone over and over and over again. This right now, which we're putting white in, so we're doing fine line work. Um, this is, is completely not even, couldn't even describe it as painful. It's more like somebody poking you with a biro. You're know in your school and you stab each other in the arm with a little bit of a pen, but not maliciously. Some sensation of hurt, but not pain. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Just a quick addition to the does it hurt thing. It definitely matters on placement of where you're getting the tattoo as well. The more meat it tends to be, it doesn't hurt as much, but I'm guessing there's like the ribs and spinal areas and anything where it's near bone, it's going to suck a little bit. Does it get bloody? Does it bleed a lot? Because obviously a lot of people don't like blood, they don't like the sight of it. Well, look, how long have we been going now? We've been going a good, uh, a good little bit stabbing myself with this puncture machine and pretty much zero, zero blood going on. The only thing really when it bleeds is the shading more than anything, isn't it? Yeah, when you, when you open up a, a bigger area of skin, um, and it all depends on the person as well. Um, and, and how their body reacts to, to, to the needle. Yeah, it's, it's more lymph fluid, it. lymphatic fluid than, and, and a touch of blood. Yeah. Because your body's naturally trying to form a scab as soon as you open the skin up. Yeah. And it's its way of uh, trying to heal it. But if you think of the size of the needle, these needles are very fine, so they're just doing small little puncture wounds all the way, so it's lymph lymphatic fluid, is it? Yeah. Which makes it look like it's way bloodier than it ever is, but it's never going to be pouring down your arm or looking really bad, unless you've gone to a really crappy tattooist. <laughs> <laughs> Preparing for the tattoo. What not to do? Don't go on the sunbed before a tattoo. Don't Everyone. go to the gym because you'll get shouted. <laughs> don't go to the gym. You can't go to the gym, so you can't go somewhere. You can't. In fact, just just be fat and don't ever go again. <laughs> <laughs> or anything that's going to help. That's going to raise your blood pressure. Blood thinners. Alcohol. Be careful of that. Yeah. Alcohol. You do have to be. Like yes. Yeah, no. Don't, yeah, if you've been out on a big one the night before, probably not best to get tattooed. You're probably going to bleed. Side note as well. Drinking and tattoos. Obviously a stupid idea. How long does it generally take to heal? We normally, depending on how you look after it, if you wet heal it, 
three to four days, it What's should wet healing. wet healing's where you keep it cling filmed, or you can use certain um, different tattooists have different techniques for that. Um, a lot Bob standardly will just use cling film, uh, but there's plenty of different things on the market now that they can actually place over your tattoo and it stays on for like two to three days. I found what helped with me was keeping it cling film for the first 24 hours, then after that, religious with the panthin was the one that yep. I used, just constantly keeping it kind of moist so it didn't dry out and doesn't get a chance to really scab. Oh, and because again, we're not making great deep cuts, you're not thinking, of, when we say scab, we don't mean like if you fall and graze your knees, we're talking fine little puncture wounds. So as long as you're keeping it from drying out, it tends to, uh, after three days, I do the slap test. I slap it and it doesn't sting too much. I'm good. <laughs> don't slap it. Do not slap it. I'm bad, three days. Bad boy. No, seven days. <laughs> If you can run your hand down you it your hand over and it. it's still feeling like normal skin, then you're on track, you're keeping it moist enough. If it starts to feel a little bit dry, a little bit scabby, then you, you need to be. You feel like the bubbles really... of each, you know, the movement of each little line. Yeah. You know. And you need um, to be just a bit more on it, keeping that moisturizer on, maybe wrap it back up again. But as a rule, within three or four days, you should be back to normal mobility. Which actually, next one, can you train after a tattoo? I would never suggest it. Now, here's where I differ on this. I will train other areas of my body that don't affect the piece that I've had work on. So now I'm having my arm tattooed here, I'm not gonna go and do bicep curls, triceps and shoulders. But what I will go and do is a core workout, um, legs, calves, any area that doesn't seem to create pain, but I will keep it wrapped whilst doing that and I'll make sure that I'm constantly dabbing down, keeping the sweat off the tattoo whilst training. So you don't need to stop for a week after a tattoo unless you've got a huge back beast done. And it is more on the health and hygiene part because when you're working out, um, you're sweating, it is an open wound. And if you're not, you know, a lot of people got gym, they're tired afterwards. You don't want to think, oh quick, I'll whip my cling film off, I'll get a really good wash and then I'll put some cream back over it. They just want to get home, so then it's sat in its own sweat. That's where the problems occur. So don't stew in your own filth and you'll be fine. As long as you're thinking, it's an open wound, I'm gonna do this. I'm, you know, it's a lot of people, like family. Family's a good one. They all have the tattoos done, and because the brothers or the sisters are tattooists, right? Everything that we tell everyone to do, they don't do. <laughs> so on a quick break, this is what the little griffin's looking like so far. You can see, just come into life again already. Get off your phone. This oh, yeah. is working Fine hours. We're going to cover this tattoo with on a bit later on, but it's uh, raising money for CF. But we'll do a little bit chatting about that towards the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. But the question we're going to hit now is: Is there a limit to kind of colours and skin types and things like that? Is there any limitation people should, you should know about? Yes. And no. Yeah, basically, the, the tensor rule is the fairer your skin, the kind of the, the brighter the colours are going to pop on you. Obviously, the darker your skin the harder it is for colours, longevity in yeah. the skin. And if you're like me and you tan quite easily, but then if you're not in the sun for a long time, your skin does get paler, you need to be sun blocking that tattoo work and keeping that skin as white as possible underneath the ink. One, so that your, your tan doesn't come through underneath the ink and dull it off. And two, to, sun, to block those rays as well, to actually protect the ink that's already in that I'm, I'm, I'm a mongrel, I'm beige, I'm kind of beige in coloration. But if I was a black dude... You can't really put loads of tones and textures in yeah. because it just doesn't, it doesn't last. Tribal, things like that, Maori, really good because obviously it's very, very bold. You can also use different black pigmented inks yeah. for darker skin. Um, you also use that. Is there specific, are there different inks for darker skin? No, no, what? it's just um, some, some, some inks are more pigmented than others. You use them as well to get really, really black tones in black and grey contrast work and stuff. So. Um, so there you go. If you've got fairer skin, the colours will pop, but it's a little harder. If you have tannable skin, you tend to be the best candidate. And hey, you know, if, you, if you're a darker skin fella, you might not be able to get the cool colourful tattoos, but just living the knowledge, you, you, you're way better at sports than I am. Can you tattoo over scars, burns, freckles, and other limiting skin types? You can tattoo over scars, skin graft, but we don't tend to tattoo over freckles and moles. If it's just really freckly skin, then yes, we do. But if it's like freckles and moles, we'll tend to stay away from them. We're going to move on to the next part of this video, which is going to be called Finding Your Artist Slash Studio. And what do you need to know? I'm going to start with, do you need a license to be a tattoo artist? You need to be health registered. Um, some 
uh, towns and cities especially have each artist health registered other studios will be as a health registration and people will then work through that studio um, but I don't I don't need like a certificate to do uh, to say I've, I've qualified as a tattoo artist there is no legal which is um, and this is a huge reason as to moment. why you need to do your research and find the right artists for the work you want and the quality that you want does price matter? A high price doesn't mean high quality tattoos. That's something you need to know right off the bat. If you go into an inner city tattoo parlor, it's gonna be expensive because of the location. They've got higher rates, higher rents, and plus people tend to put a premium on things that are in highly populated areas. Don't waste the choice of the tattoos, just on the price alone. Plus, don't skimp. For example, so Lisa's rates are? 50 pound an hour and with... 250 for a full day. Now you will pay between 75 to 100 pounds an hour if you just go to any inner city tattoo kind of base or anything that's around a city. I've had all my work done by Lisa and have often been next to other people who've had work done at more expensive places due to where they were located and the work that I've received has much more adoration than the other person's work. Also, have a look online. I mean, now we've got Facebook and Instagram and everything else. You know, you can, you can research your tattooist. Have a look at the work that they've already done. Um, go into the studio, have a chat, make sure they, you get on with them and, and, and they've, got the no, they've got the knowledge of what you want doing and they, they're confident with the way they come across with what you want doing. Uh, that's another big one. You know, I mean, if you want a portrait, don't go to someone who's well known for doing travel, you know. Common sense rule 101. This is on you for life. Life. When you break it down, you're talking point something of a pence per day value of, when, of it being on your skin. If you can't afford to get good work, don't get the work. It's pretty much that simple. Yeah. Fair? Very fair, yeah. How do you pick the right tattooist? So picking the tattooist for me is, like we just discussed in the previous one, look at the work that they do. Does it fit the style that you want? So for me, I wanted kind of a bit of a mythical thing with the griffin going on, colours and that kind of Japanese feel to it, which is a lot of what Lisa does. She has a lot of that kind of animalistic style work, so she's uh, good with that. So you wouldn't say that, you wouldn't specialise in something like portraits, would you? Your work is more... No, I do do portraits, you do? Yeah. but most work that I do is either big colour or um, a lot of the time it's cover-up work. Yeah, which is what a good tattooist should tell you when you're talking to them about something. In fact, a lot of the times I've seen Lisa refer people to somebody else that is a sign of a good tattoo artist, somebody who's not out to just make a quick buck. So, like Lisa said, make sure that they've got confidence in the style of what you want and do your research. Research is key. Don't skimp, don't be rushed. And that moves on to another point as well, is don't be pressured into getting a tattoo. Yeah. That's a, a big one. So you've picked your artist, now how do you get the best from them? Now I learned this from the way that I dealt with, with Lisa. I came in and asked her, what, what makes you want to do a tattoo? The answer I got was, don't give me a copy and paste. Yeah, exactly. Because this is art at the end of the day. And if you just give someone something, a, a trace and go, they'll do a good job with it, don't get me wrong, but you don't get that heart and soul. You don't get those finer details, the things that make something really special. So the way Lisa and I worked it when we came in is you asked me main pieces. Yeah. And I came up with about 800 ideas. Yeah, we did. <laughs> for, for one sleeve and, and Lisa went, no. No, it's too much. It would have been like, yeah, the griffin would have been this big, <laughs> and then a rose, and then a angels, robin, a ro angels, angels, a yeah. banner, <laughs> words, yeah. and it would have just been a mishmash of rubbish, which again is another good sign of a good artist, is someone who tells you no. Yeah, I don't think if they say no, that they're just pricks. Or arrogant or, or, or arrogant anything like, no. or anything, because a lot of tattooists will say no, and they'll just be very blunt about it, because at the end of the day, it's on you for the rest of, the li rest of your life. Yep. So... It's, it's like, you know, if, if you were going for a medical procedure and a doctor says, no, you shouldn't have that done, you listen. Yeah. It's the same with tattoos. It's on you for the rest of your life. So if they say, that won't work, or that's not that's not my style of, of work, I can put you on to somebody else, listen and, and, and do that because, you know, we all want everybody to have the best looking, ink, you know, we're all very confident and happy we are work and we'd love to tattoo everybody, but... You know, if you've got, if, if I think an artist is going to do a better piece of work because their style matches it better, I would rather have someone walking out because it gives us, as as, as a community of tattooists, the best, you know, the best. Um, yeah, because if you're saying something else to someone else, you think in return they're going to send other people to you exactly. who want another yeah. piece. So, 
Yeah, I mean, so that, that is the biggest thing you can do. So when I came in, I gave Lisa the rough ideas of, she was like, what are the major pieces that you wanted? And I gave her those, and then I was like, what, will, what, what gets the best from you? What makes you excited to do a tattoo? And it was, let me work the way I want to work on it with your idea as the basis of the piece. And so that's what we did. And it literally came in, we positioned the major piece, which was the griffin, and then from there, I told these the other bits I wanted in there, like the butterflies, roses, and things that was meant a lot to me. But I let her place them, and anything that you see in the background, all these small flowers, all that colour, I didn't want blue in my tattoo. And it's honestly one of the most commented things I get now, is the colour of the tattoo and the way it looks. And I wouldn't have had it had I not listened. And it was a basic of, trust me, and it will work. So it's working alongside your tattooist, not telling them exactly what to do. That will get you the best work and it'll make them want to do it. And if somebody has passion in what they're doing, they're always gonna give you their best. It's honestly from some of the biggest and best advice you should get from the entirety of this video. Here's a good comparison. So the back of my arm and everything size of it didn't hurt. This sucks. But to avoid, or getting a tattoo. So major things people should be thinking about avoiding. Lisa, go. Don't go for Oh, I'll have that because it's cheap and I want a tattoo. That's one of the biggest mistakes. That's one of the biggest mistakes. Or I'll go to them who's tattooing at home because they'll do it for 50 quid cheaper than what a studio will do it. Which normally means in 12 to 18 months you'll be paying double that to get it covered up. Probably have all sorts going wrong. This leads me to as well, which was one, is make sure your tattoo has meaning to it. Now, it doesn't always have to be this, um, but it's... If your tattoo has a story or a meaning or some kind of history behind it, rather than just picking something you think looks cool, you're going to love it a lot, lot longer. It's going to have meaning to you and that's what matters. So you're going to never get bored of looking at that piece of art on your skin. That's one of my top tips. Another one that we tend to say to people, especially when it's your first tattoo, is keep the image on your phone, have it as your screensaver, have it as, as, as your lock screen, anything like that. And if after three months you're still as in love with it as you were the first day you saw it, then get it done. Again, I can attest to this because if you look on my other arm here, there, that is my mother's tattoo. That's the strongest woman in England. And this is my mum's tattoo. My mum's tattoo, my mum's signature on my arm. Now I thought about that and I didn't get it done for three years after coming up with the idea. And after three years, I still wanted it. And the same with this sleeve again. So between getting that tattoo and this tattoo, uh, I waited another three years with the idea in my head and I still wanted it. If you do that, if you go with that theory, you should avoid getting kind of the fashionable things, which can look really, really cool at the time, but obviously don't age too well. We've already mentioned don't drink and tattoo, always a good one. Um, although saying that, you know, sometimes you can have fun and end up with a funny tattoo that it does fall under the it has a meaning thing, but as a rule, don't drink and prod. I'll tell you another one that a lot of people think is the right thing to do if uh, they're that way inclined is have a smoke before they come for a tattoo. Not a good idea. As in like the, the, not the, the hokey pokey tokey smoky? Yeah. Weed. Yeah, it not only impairs judgement, your body's already relaxed and then all of a sudden you're putting it in shock again and it tends to be more painful um, from what I've seen um, through clients past and present. There you go, didn't know that one. I would have thought that would have been a benefit. On this camera though, that vein is loyal. Oh. Yeah, take it off. <laughs> one big mistake is... Having names tattooed. I love him, we're gonna be together <laughs> forever. No, you're not. It wasn't me. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's a true one. Uh, names, anything that... So this is why, honestly, sometimes having picture meanings rather than direct words, dates, and names is often a great way to represent something that if something does go a little bit awry, you've still just got a good piece of artwork rather than someone's name plastered across you, which is very tough to cover up, especially if it's in big block black letters. Done because I've been an absolute dick and it's going to show him that I, that I love him. I've had it done because I've stuck my... Oh my woman. god, people get tattooed to show... If you've got tattooed to show someone that you care about them because you've done something wrong, you deserve all the covering up that you're going to need. You're so stupid. You're so stupid, man. Why are you stupid? You're so stupid. <laughs> so I am done. I'm going to get home and I'll show you a real close-up of the work we've done now once it's been wiped down. Just before we finish this, on the 23rd of September, 
for cystic fibrosis, Lisa is doing a tattoo-a-thon. Mm -hmm. This is, they're gonna be tattooing from eight o'clock in the morning to eight nine o'clock, nine o'clock in the evening. So this is something that anyone around the area can get involved with. I'll put the address, contact details, and everything of Lisa in the description box below. You can come and pick, is it a tattoo from? Between 20 and 35 pounds. 50 or so tattoo choices to pick from, yeah. ranging from really simplistic to a little bit more detail. And obviously the more detail, a little bit more money that you put forward and all the money goes towards the funding cystic fibrosis, which if you don't know, is uh, a disease that a lot of young people suffer from. You know, Lisa's personally affected by it and wanted to do something to help. And she's already got how many people coming? About 60 so far. 60 people already coming today. Got four so. artists at the moment with two more hopefully joining in. So 23rd September, addressed in the bottom, this is Fantasy Tattoo in Colm. You come and pick a tattoo and all the money goes towards the charity to help people have a better life. What could be more positive from something that can be very beautiful? So thank you all very much for watching. This is Lisa. Let's get back home so I can wash this, show it to you, and then we'll finish up this video. So it's the next day I'm home now and you can see the results of the work that we did the other day. You can see how much more that griffin is popping off. We've had all those whites put through and also had these flowers here all outlined. And also on the underside here. Now they're all quite dark at the moment and that will soften off way more. And this griffin will actually brighten up even further because at the moment there will be some laser skin that will shed off here over the next three or four days. So that is the final thing we'll leave you with here is when you do first get your tattoos, they're gonna be a lot darker when you first get them done. And don't worry, they'll open up and almost come to life over the following next few days. But I hope this video has been useful. I'm pretty sure we will have missed something or other in this. So if we've missed the major question you want covering, hit me up in the comment section below because I will be going back to Lisa because we've got to get some more done on all this filigree work and some more flowers and a bit more color pumped through that back rose there. If you've liked this video, please hit that thumbs up. Leave a comment with the questions you want below. Make sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell and make sure to select all notifications and that way you won't miss any videos. I'll also doing that update on my vacuum challenge. I'm gonna do a 30 day vacuum challenge for shrinking that waist and I'm gonna show you how I have done after week one. Ha! And we'll keep vlogging those through with a final transformation at the end of the 30 day period, but I'll keep you updated in the meantime. So that's everything from me. I'll catch you in the next video. I've been Lex. The sun's shining, finally outside in the UK, so I'm gonna go hit the gym. Boom, baby!